Doctor, I need to question Countess Andreni. I'm afraid that won't be possible, Mr. Poirot. The Countess had an anxiety attack when we arrived in Venice. She was terrified the police would come for her and her husband, despite how you concluded your investigation. I had to give her a sedative. She has been sleeping since. You have stayed with her all the time we were in Venice? Count Andreni begged me to watch over her. I have not left this room. You're the reason she's in this state. Book voted to absolve you all. I accepted his verdict. I told her. I tried to reason with her. What she has already suffered, the strain of these last few days, it was too much. I understand, Count. It's quite all right. I have the answers I came for. Another delightful trophy for my collection. Ah, Michel, I have a few more questions to ask you, if you will allow me. Anything, Monsieur Poirot. We are in your debt. Please tell me your movements when we were stopped at Venice Station. Once the compartments were cleaned and the linen refreshed, I stayed in my quarters. Did you notice anything special? Comings and goings? Monsieur Book had asked everyone to stay in their compartments. I would occasionally walk the train to ensure everyone was comfortable. Oh, I saw Monsieur Maury was all alone loading his crates of provisions. A great chef like that, reduced to petty labor. I would have helped him. But Monsieur Book had ordered me not to leave the train for any reason. So, Monsieur Maury was forced to labor alone. Let us review the actual timeline of the night of Ratchet's murder, not the one manufactured to hide your crime. I left the train in Binkowski for a smoke, then I resumed my post. That was the truth. The train departed on schedule, but then of course an avalanche of snow blocked the tracks. At 12.45, Madame Hubbard and I met in her compartment to discuss how to adapt our plan. Due to the snow and Poirot, the little play we had staged for you had to be rewritten. I left your compartment at approximately 1.15. Then the curtain went up. Calls in the night, the red kimono, all for my benefit. And all for nothing, as it turned out. Do not blame yourself, Michel. I am the theater critic no playwright wants to see in the audience. You play well. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Thank you. Many years of piano lessons thanks to my mother. I try to play in a few clubs in Paris when I get the chance. But as you can see, it hasn't made me rich. What can I do for you? Conversation only. Tell me about your time in Venice. I had Monsieur Book's permission to see my sister. She lives in Marghera, just outside of Venice. She had a baby a few weeks ago. This was my first chance to meet my new nephew. Monsieur Book gave you permission? Yes, you can ask him. Most assuredly, I will. What time did you leave and when did you return? I left around 9, 10 p.m. I was back by 10.45 p.m. When I got back, Hotaru was in a lot of pain. I gave him a back massage. That would have been enough time to kill Monsieur Wadi and return to the train. May I see your knives? Of course. They are here. If you don't mind. Help yourself. They are under the bar counter. Tell me again about your poker game the night of the murder. It's a regular game to help relax after a long day. Let's see, we started around 11 p.m. We took a short break in Vinkovsky, Hotaru, Pierre and I. The game finished up around 2 a.m. We'd all had quite a bit to drink. Ah, yes, 
I left for about 10 minutes to refrigerate champagne for the next day. That must have been around 1 a.m. None of these come close to the wounds on either body. Good evening, Monsieur Maury. May I have a moment of your time? I have a few questions to ask you. Of course! As long as you don't mind if dinner is ruined. I promise to be as brief as possible. What did you do while we were stopped in Venice? With Freya's help, I loaded fresh produce for the next part of our journey. Then, you may not believe this, but my job requires a lot of physical labor. My back suffers. Fortunately, Jean has become quite adept at separating my vertebrae. As you may know, I have solved the murder of Monsieur Ratchet. That is a shame. I beg your pardon? The bastard sent my steak turtle back telling John I was to burn it. I will add it to the list of his crimes. One wound on Monsieur Ratchet's body was struck by a very sharp, thin-bladed knife. We haven't found it yet. You think one of mine was used? I'd like to have a look, if you don't mind. In that drawer. Hmm, an impressive set of knives. But their blades are too wide to have been used for the crime. Tell me about your poker game the night of the murder. We started around 11 p.m. when John finished his shift. We played until around 2 a.m. From what I remember, it's a bit vague. You played without a break? Actually, we did break once for a smoke. John, Pierre, and I. When we stopped in Vinkovsky. When was that? Around midnight. Good evening, Mademoiselle Nielsen. May I talk to you for a moment? Of course, Mr. Poirot. I'm not going to bed right away. Can you tell me your movements while we were stopped in Venice? Uh, that'll be easy. I didn't move much at all. Let's see. I helped Hataru load all of the food crates aboard the train. Hataru had everything he needed, but I realized they forgot half of my order. I spent over an hour on the phone with the supplier, without success. I had to change the dessert menu for tomorrow. Dr. Constantine found a stab wound on Ratchet's body that was caused by a much thinner and sharper blade than the others. Possibly a chef's knife? My thought, precisely. And you'd like to see my knives? If you wouldn't mind. I would gladly show you if I had any, but I don't. I use the regular kitchen knives. You may search if you don't believe me. I see. All the knives the staff use are in the kitchen or in the lounge. Except... Except? Otaro prefers to use his own. Monsieur Mori doesn't use the kitchen knives. Not usually. I know he keeps a set of traditional Japanese knives in a box in his room. He doesn't let anyone else use them. Although now that I think of it, he has been using the kitchen knives lately. Can you tell me exactly about your poker game, the night of the murder? We started around 11 p.m. In Binkovsky, we took a short break. Hataru and Pierre went outside to smoke. Oh, and Hataru got sick around... a few minutes past 1 a.m. 1.10 a.m., maybe? He spent about 15 minutes in the bathroom, but he didn't want to quit on a losing streak. 
Did his luck improve? No. So we played to around 2 a.m. He lost every hand. You told Fauché he could go into Venice? Marghera, actually. Uh, not so far away. It was his only chance to see his sister. He's been working every trade for weeks. There is never time to see the new baby. Enough, Book. Your heart does you credit, but your common sense, it... Uh... I know. But it's fine. Isn't it? He did come back. Oh, it's fine, as you say. Unless he saw the baby then killed someone else and returned to the train. But that's monstrous. Murder is always monstrous, my friend. I've talked to everyone, but some elements of the testimonies do not seem to correspond. I need to recheck a few things. Any of the three staff members had the opportunity to kill Ratchet when Monsieur Michel wasn't watching the hallway. My little grey cells did not let me down. Remind me of what you did when the train stopped in Venice. No problem. I helped Hataru load all of the food crates aboard the train. Hataru had everything he needed, but I realized they forgot half of my order. I spent over an hour on the phone with the supplier, without success. I had to change the dessert menu for tomorrow. Mademoiselle, I believe you're hiding the truth from me. What makes you say that? Michel saw Monsieur Mori carrying the crates of food alone. You weren't on the platform. I did help Hataru. The entire time? He carried so many crates, his back was sore. Ah, I'm sorry about that. Okay, I'm guilty. I did leave him before we were finished. But I had to. There was no saffron he needed for a recipe. I volunteered to go into Venice and get him some. The Rialto market would be open late because of the carnival. He gave me money. I knew we weren't supposed to leave the train, but I only wanted to help. Mr. Mori can confirm this. Ask him. I saved dinner. Oh, on behalf of my palate, I thank you. How long were you gone? I left at 9.10 p.m. and was back with the saffron around 11. That's when I called my supplier for the items I was missing. Miss Nielsen had almost two hours to buy the saffron, find a costume, kill Monsieur Wadi, 
elude Detective Locke and make it back to the train for that phone call. Yes, it's possible that was enough time. Thank you, Mademoiselle Nielsen. That is all for now. Sorry again, Mr. Poirot. I hope you enjoy tonight's dessert. is secured by some sort of locking mechanism. The design is formed by three commas. What is the word in Japanese? Tamoe. And it's obviously missing a piece. object that looks like a broken comma. It must be part of something else.
Colteria Venezia. I'm sorry, Monsieur Mori, but haven't you forgotten something? You haven't told me about the knives hidden in your room. Ha! Yes, indeed. I forgot to tell you about those. They are my personal knives. I only use these knives. There are none better. I bought them all in Japan. No one is allowed to touch them except me. I'm afraid you are better at sushi than lying. What? What do you mean? One of the knives has an inscription, Coltelleria Venezia. Did you happen to go shopping tonight, monsieur? Damn you, Poirot. Very well. One of my sushi knives has been missing. Since the night of the murder, I thought you were going to believe I killed Ratchet. He routinely sent back my dishes to be ruined. Why does God give rich people the money to afford the best cuisine, but not the palate to appreciate it? I... I panic. I know a very good store in Venice. I went to buy a knife to replace the one that had gone missing. So... I wouldn't be accused. I assure you that I had nothing to do with any murders. I would have an easier time believing you, monsieur, if you put that knife down. Oh, yes, of course. Sorry. What time did you leave on your little shopping trip? I left around 9.30 p.m. I was back a little after 11. 11 11.15 p.m.? Mm, Time enough to stab Monsieur Wadi and return. Very well, Monsieur Maury. That's all for now. If I have another question... I'll be right here, cooking. I'm right again. That happens to... What have you been doing, Poirot? I am completely in the dark. I will shine some light on the situation, my friend. I have three new suspects who could have killed Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi. Miss Nielsen, Monsieur Fauché, and Monsieur Maury. They all had periods of time during both murders to commit the deed, and their alibis are weak. A visit to family, and not one, but two shopping trips. But, but, all are my employees. Alas, yes, my dear book. But we have no proof against any of them. None of the three appears to have any motive whatsoever. But this is a tragedy. Do not give up hope. We will catch this murderer. There is still one place that may hold the evidence we need. 
Geneva. Exact. Do not give up hope. Well, that's easy for you to say. But what if it's Freya? What becomes of dessert? If it's Sotaru, who will cook? Me? And the worst, if it's Jean, who will serve the drinks? I've been checking up on the Banque du Lac. I had to confirm my identity for Interpol, so they contacted my captain at the Berkshire Police. I suspect he was not pleased. That my vacation was actually an unofficial investigation? I'll say. I would be happy to speak to him on your behalf. Thank you. But he'll get over it. It's a chance to close the books on the Armstrong kidnapping. He stopped yelling, asked for a report, then granted me an extra week. Excellent. What did you learn from Interpol about the Banque du Lac? It's had a bad reputation for over a century. Customers have included the Mafia, Nazis, corporate swindlers of every description, even heads of state. It is true, this. It is the worst kept secret in banking. They take advantage of the bank's strict policy of protecting the anonymity of its clients. This is in defiance of many laws from multiple countries, including Switzerland itself. Of course, I have never taken advantage of such a corrupt system. That goes without saying, my friend. There are ongoing investigations, subpoenas, court orders. The bank will eventually have to comply or its assets may be seized. But until then, it still thrives, thanks to its wealthy and powerful clients. It sounds perfect for the late Monsieur Ratchet. Do you have any ideas? The serial numbers from some of the bills match those from the Armstrong kidnapping. We agreed in Venice that the bulk of the money must still be physically in the bank's vault. I concur, Detective Locke. Exemplary work. So, our next task is clear. We need to get into Ratchet's safety deposit box. There will be codes, passwords. And Monsieur Wadi would, of course, have known them all. The bag of money he carried is proof of that. We'll need to find information about Ratchet's box in Wadi's office at the bank. Most assuredly, but remember the secrecy involved. I doubt his office will contain all we need. Where else must we dig? That was easy. Mr. Wadi couldn't keep all of his secrets at the bank. Hopefully we'll find something in his apartment. We already have his address, thanks to his passport, and his keys we retrieved from his body. The train stops in Lausanne at 8 a.m. But that's far from Geneva. I can delay the departure until 11 a.m., no later. The police are expecting us in Paris by the end of the afternoon, at the latest. They won't tolerate any delay. The bank doesn't open until nine. I can see only one way that gives us a chance to be on time. Let's take a taxi. I checked a map. It should take us less than an hour to get to Geneva from Lausanne, which leaves us just enough time to access that safety deposit box. We have no choice if we want to be back to the train by 11 a.m. The best thing is to separate. One of us searches his apartment, The other searches his office. To access the safety deposit box, we need to find the key, the box number, and the passcode. Suppose you find all this. How do you plan to get into the vault? We are going to use the bank's anonymity policy to our advantage. And the quickest way is for you to impersonate Ratchet. I would rather impersonate Jack the Ripper. But in the interest of justice, I will do it. We need to find the account number. Along with everything else. I will say I want access to the vault. They don't ask for papers or even names. The vault information is enough. I'm not hearing any of this. I run a train company. I don't rob banks. Perfect. Let's recap the plan. To sum up, we're going by taxi to Geneva. Then we'll split up. You're going to search Mr. Wadi's apartment. I'll search the office at the bank. When we have all the information we need, 
You pretend to be Ratchet, and we can finally find out what Ratchet is keeping hidden in his safety deposit box. It sounds impossible. Not for Detective Joanna Locke and Hercule Poirot. We should get some rest. You are right, Detective. We face our greatest challenge tomorrow. Together. Nine o'clock. Our driver did well. It took barely an hour to get here from Lausanne. But we must conclude our business in one hour as well. Book can only hold the train until 11 o'clock. One hour to find the key of Ratchet safety deposit box, the box number, and its passcode. A lot to ask. Indeed. Which is why we must split our forces. I will take the cab to Monsieur Wadi's address. You must search his office. I have you on speed dial. And thank you. Mr. Poirot. For what, mademoiselle? For trusting me. You there. I have an appointment with Mr. Wadi. Let me check. I'm sorry, I don't see any appointments this morning at all. Mr. Wadi hasn't even arrived yet. Although he should be here by now. Even though your customers are anonymous, considering the amount of money involved, you should still have a mention of a meeting. Yes, I can't understand it. I'll be sure to ask Mr. Wadi when he arrives. In the meantime, you are more than welcome to wait in his office. I see you're not disturbed. Please follow me. can't understand where Mr. Wadi might be. You're right. I don't have much time at all. A souvenir tower of Babel. Mm, makes sense. We know that Mr. Wadi is from Iraq, and the ancient tower is said to have been built there. Alice in Wonderland, again. Mr. Wadi seems to have really liked this book. I need the password. Maybe Poirot can help me. I'm taking a picture of it. I'll send it to Poirot. It might be useful to him. I managed to get into Wadi's office. I did a quick preliminary search. Everything is locked, including his computer. All I could find was a photo with a date on it. I just sent it to you. Maybe you can use it. Thank you. That might help. I've just arrived at the apartment. I'll call you when I find something. As quick as you can. I can't stay here long. This is definitely not Monsieur Wadi's apartment. This is definitely not Monsieur Wadi's apartment. Ah, here we are. 
Let's see if the key I picked up in Monsieur Wadi's luggage in Venice will open his door. Great. A dart, a familiar projectile found in any pub in England. This belongs here. Staring at the clock won't help. Wow. This could be the password to Monsieur Wadi's office computer. He must change it every month. It seems to have a logical sequence, but I need to find the one for December. If that's the password to the computer in Monsieur Wadi's office, we still need to translate the Arabic characters. And there weren't any Arabic characters on the office computer's keyboard. I wonder if the computer in Monsieur Wadi's office has a similar Arabic keyboard. Et voilà! computer won't give up its secrets easily. This keyboard should help me translate this code. Arabic is read from right to left, so the password must surely be read that way too. With any luck, this will unlock the computer in Monsieur Wadi's office. Let me text it to Miss Locke. I'm right again. That happens to me a lot. Did you receive my text? This must be the password to Mr. Wadi's computer. I have it. Thank you.
Mr. Poirot, how are you doing? I have little to report, but keep looking. Who are you? What are you doing in there? I am Hercule Poirot. I am working with the police. You are Monsieur Wadi's neighbor? Uh, yes, next door. I heard a noise. I thought it was Mr. Wadi who had come home. I don't know him very well. A delivery man left a package for him with me. You don't know your neighbor very well. Yes, what of it? How is it that Monsieur Wadi has a picture of you on his desk? There is quite a family resemblance. You wouldn't be his brother by any chance. Why are you going through his things? As I told you, I am working with the police. All right, yes. I'm his brother. Mehdi Wadi. Do you know where he is? I am very sorry, sir, but I have some terrible news for you. Your brother has been murdered. You have my sincere condolences. Oh no, Aziz, my wife, my son, their hearts will break. Everything he did was for his family. He brought us here from Iraq to give my son a better future. We can't go back. You won't, you won't. Do not fret, Monsieur Wadi. I do not want to cause trouble for you and your family. I am here to catch his murderer. When did you last see your brother? Two days ago. He was on his way to Venice. It was not a journey he was looking forward to. I knew something was wrong, but he promised all would be well soon. My son will be heartbroken. Aziz made the point of reading to Fadi every night so he could learn English. We hope to legally emigrate there one day. Your son, Fadi. What did Monsieur Wadi read to him? His favorite book is Alice in Wonderland. The nonsense of it all. <laughs> Why? It is the answer to a question I had. I believe your brother was a good man, forced for some reason to keep secrets, and that got him killed. Sir, there is something else. Aziz left me a letter to open if anything should happen to him. Could you show it to me? Yes, I, I will get it. Mm, it all makes sense. It's horrific. But to Ratchet, it would be just business as usual. At least I have Ratchet's account number, 82664. Thank you for giving me this letter. Let me assure you, the man Ratchet cannot harm you. He was killed before your brother was. Really? Who did it? The one you say hunted Ratchet? Yes, without a doubt. I promise you I will find them. Sir, we have no papers. The police... Your secret is safe with me, monsieur. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Now, I must go to my wife and son. Tonight, I will read to Fadi from Alice in Wonderland, and we will remember my brother. I need to notify Mademoiselle Locke that I have Ratchet's bank account number. I texted Ratchet's account number to you. Wonderful. safety deposit box. At last, I should let Mr. Poirot know.
I was able to access Mr. Wadi's computer. I have Ratchet's safety deposit box number. Excellent. That may be useful to Mademoiselle Locke or me. I'll take a photo. Bizarre endgame to be sure, but I suspect checkmate is possible for white in three moves. Let's see. That is not a good answer. Good job. That's the right answer. habit some people have of displaying things on the door of their refrigerator. I've just sent a photo to you, in case it might help you. Thank you. I wonder if it will fit the desk drawer. Those indentations are from the sheet of the notepad that was on top. This is great. All those mystery movies I watched as a kid. I know what to do. I'll send a picture of this to Poirot. Thank you. 
I sent you a photo of doodles I found on a notepad. I hope it can help you. I hope so as well. It looks like a safe key to me. We finally found it. key to the password is close. I can feel it. Ratchet. 
its password. Here it is. My little gray cells did not let me down. I believe I have discovered Ratchet's safety deposit box passcode. We're almost there. We're running out of time. Do we have everything? I have the key to the safety deposit box. I have the number of the box. And we have the passcode. I'm on my way. Time to rob a bank. Sorry to keep you waiting. I haven't heard from Monsieur Wadi. You'll have to reschedule with him. This is quite annoying. I'll have to reschedule. Absolutely. I... I hope I have been of service. You have no idea. That was fast. We do this as planned? Yes, I am, Monsieur Ratchet. But with the bank's questionable policy, I do not expect anyone to ask. Right. Absolute secrecy regarding their clients. The last Swiss bank of its kind. Come to Poirot, my exquisitely sculpted friend. Madame, I still haven't heard from Mr. Wadi. Well, we'll have to make do without him, now that my friend is here. It's his box we want to access. And the clock is ticking. I trust there is no problem. No, no problem at all. May I have your safety deposit box number? 4346. May I see your key? Do you know your passcode? Yes. Mademoiselle will be able to accompany me. No names, of course. Of course. I'll open the door. Go down the stairs. The guard will accompany you. Please leave your personal belongings in this bin and then go through the portal. I'll open it for you. At last, we reach our goal. Now, I will insert my key, if you allow. Thank you. I'll be by the door should you need any assistance. At last. I suspect the effort will be worth it. This collection of various personal items. Do you know what they are, Detective Locke? I do, Mr. Poirot. God help me, I do. Souvenirs. 
the trophies serial killers take from their victims to remind them of their kills. Ratchet wasn't just a kidnapper. No, indeed. He was a monster. The one on the left. Ratchet. Whoever he is with, their friendship seems over. The build. The hair. It could be Noah, his partner in Daisy's kidnapping. It appears they had a falling out. MC. The real journalist Michael Clark. Ratchet would have needed to kill him to assume his identity. He took this ring as his trophy. He knew the serial numbers on the banknotes could be traced. The rest of the Armstrong ransom money. The serial numbers match. For every soul Ratchet claimed, even more are suffering. I wonder who this keychain belonged to. Certainly not Ratchet. Another trophy. A woman. We may never know her name. You were lucky, mademoiselle, when you met him at that cabin in the forest, alone. How many victims do you think Ratchet had? Too many. Another victim. Another bracelet. Another victim. Another trophy. And then there's the one that we already found. Suzanne's red glasses. Another trophy. We may never know how many people he killed. Diamonds. A fortune. Crime does pay. No, mademoiselle. This time it was the criminal who finally paid. Four years of investigation. It's all over. I finally have the last piece of evidence that Ratchet was Daisy's kidnapper and murderer. More than that, you have helped unmask a serial killer responsible for so many deaths. But even with all this, we're no closer to solving Ratchet's murder. On the contrary, mademoiselle. Everything. It is coming together. Don't you agree, detective? What? The damaged photograph. It could be Noah. You think Noah killed Ratchet for revenge? The train. What about the train? I know how a killer could vanish without leaving a trace in the snow. Wings? Camouflage. The trophies. Poirot? We have a train to catch. Not just a train, Detective Locke. We have a murderer to catch. Oh, enough! You have kept us in suspense ever since we left Lausanne. Forgive me, my friend. Detective Locke and I needed the time to put the last pieces of the puzzle in their proper places. I'll fill in where I can, but this is Mr. Poirot's show. I confess I can't help, but I feel a certain déjà vu. You are correct, Doctor. We have been here before. However, without you we wouldn't have been able to reach the true conclusion of this story. My friends, your attention, please. I hope you have finished your dessert. You have every right to think the solution to the murder of Ratchet is a closed book. You are wrong. I, Poirot, 
admit that I was wrong. There is a final chapter. What in bloody hell? What does he mean? Perhaps if we are silent, Monsieur Poirot will explain. Most of us naturally expect a journey by train to proceed in an orderly fashion from station to station. But this journey has gone off the rails. A comfortable journey, which should have been restful, turned out to be quite a challenge for my little gray cells. I beg your indulgence. I know it will be painful, but I must update you on the strange turn the ratchet murder investigation has taken. I had two hypotheses, as you recall. A stranger boarded the train in Vinkovsky, killed Ratchet, and then exited the train unobserved. That was the first possibility. The second solution gave us 12 jurors who condemned Ratchet to death for the kidnapping and murder of Daisy Armstrong. My friend, Book, properly chose the first solution for the authorities. However, thanks to Dr. Constantine here, a 13th stab wound was discovered, throwing that solution into disarray. Moreover, the words of a witness called into question the chronology of the night of the murder upon which the first two solutions were based. Detective Locke? Michael admitted to having been absent several times during the night. His absence, therefore, gave multiple opportunities for a 13th murderer to slip into Ratchet's room before the other 12 jurors lined up to stab him. You are saying the man Ratchet was... was... when we... Yes. You executed a man who was already dead. But there were other suspects that night. Other suspects? Who? They stand before you. Mr. Fauché? Mr. Maury and Ms. Nielsen, and they all also had a hole in their stories about their movements that night. Mr. Poirot? Most of you don't know it, but there was a second murder in Venice. Mein Gott, another murder. The victim was a man named Aziz Wadi, a banker in Geneva who was on the payroll of Ratchet. He looked after the money Ratchet obtained from the Armstrong ransom. Ratchet needed money and arranged to meet Mr. Wadi in Venice. One of these three knew about that money. Now, each of them had an alibi of a sort. But if any of their alibis was a lie, that person had time to murder Monsieur Wadi. Monsieur Fauché, Mademoiselle Nielsen, and Monsieur Maury. One of you murdered Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi. Are you kidding? I pour drinks for our guests. I don't murder them. It's nonsense. You are accusing me because of my knives? But why would one of my employees kill Ratchet? The killer's motive for killing Ratchet was revenge, but not for Daisy's death. The motive for Aziz Wadi's murder was also revenge. Mr. Wadi was helping Ratchet. Ratchet had an accomplice in the kidnapping named Noah. They kidnapped Daisy together. Ratchet stored the ransom money in a Swiss bank that protected anonymous clients. He forced Monsieur Wadi to watch over the money. Once enough time had passed, Ratchet felt it was safe to have Monsieur Wadi bring him cash whenever Ratchet needed it. The serial numbers of the bills would still be in a file, but no one would be actively checking it. Precisely. But Ratchet didn't just keep the ransom in his safety deposit box. There was something much worse. There was something much worse than Daisy's ransom money in that safety deposit box. During her investigation, Detective Locke found evidence proving that Ratchet was what is known as a trophy killer. 
he kept souvenirs of his crimes. We found trophies in the safety deposit box. There were others in a cabin Ratchet used in the Berkshire Mountains, including a beloved toy of little daisies. If I'd have known that, I would have cut the bastard's head off. I'm right again. That happens to... The bracelet found in the safety deposit box was also on Noah's wrist in a photograph. It's obvious. Ratchet killed Noah. And therefore, at last, I can tell you with absolute certainty who the murderer of Ratchet and Monsieur Wadi is. Mademoiselle Nielsen has the same bracelet as the one found in the safety deposit box in Geneva. A trophy from a victim of Ratchet, Noah. Having a similar bracelet doesn't prove anything. Yes, that might be true. If there were not an inscription on it. Mr. Poirot, you're right. The bracelet looks similar to mine, but I have no idea what the marks on it mean. I just like the design. The marks are not random, mademoiselle. These are special bracelets. They are called Morse code bracelets. Because, well, you know why. The marks are Morse code. Happily, I learned Morse when I was a young man doing my service for the Belgian army. The bracelet found in Ratchet's safety deposit box was the name Freya in Morse code. Your first name. It belonged to your father, Noah. Noah Nielsen. Let's stop playing this little game, mademoiselle. What does yours say? Noah? It says father. Ratchet. That... Bastard! He kept my father's bracelet as a... as a... trophy. Thank you. I have to admit your timing for Ratchet's murder was perfect. Do you mind if I continue? Would it matter? Go ahead. You've earned the right to crow. I do not make bird sounds, mademoiselle. I take no pleasure in this. You drugged Ratchet's dessert to ensure he would be unconscious when you went to his room. You stole a knife from Monsieur Mori. If it was identified as the murder weapon, he would be accused. You knew Pierre Michel would leave the train for a smoke whenever it was stopped at a station. At Vinkovsky, you waited until he was on the station platform. Then, you carefully made your way along the first-class corridor to Ratchet's room. You entered Ratchet's room with the pass key, accessible to all employees in the crew quarters. You stabbed Ratchet at midnight. But that knife, where is it? Probably thrown out of Ratchet's window before the train left the station. A thorough search after the snow melts should turn it up. My beautiful knife! Then, you carefully returned to the crew quarters, replaced the passkey, and returned to your poker game. Et voilà. The affair was not so complicated in the end. But what made the crime seem more complex? Well... It was us. Exactly. The 12 jurors who proceeded to carry out their far more complicated plan literally in the dark without realizing that the man was already dead. 
speaking only for myself, of course. But I believe we would have invited you to join us. Ms. Nielsen, you killed Ratchet because he killed your father. Your motive is crystal clear. But why did you kill Aziz Wadi? It's because of Aziz that my father died. My father knew Aziz was the only one with access to Ratchet's safe. So he convinced Aziz to steal the money from the safety deposit box. But Aziz was too afraid of Ratchet. Instead, he betrayed my father by reporting him to Ratchet. Obviously, Ratchet then murdered my father. Aziz was just as guilty of my father's death as Ratchet. Ratchet was the worst of humanity. But Monsieur Wadi, if you knew his story... My father is dead because of him. I will not debate the point with you, mademoiselle. He had done nothing to justify his death. I do not see any extenuating circumstances that should allow you to escape justice. You will be arrested at the Gare de Lyon when we arrive in Paris. Judge and jury are you, Monsieur Poirot. And you get away with it. It must be nice. But think of this. I know what you did. What you all did. She's right. She could turn us all in. Relax. Hector, is it? Your secret is safe with me. I'm not going to jail. Farewell, Poirot. Enjoy your victory. Stop. No, Freya, don't jump. You're going to die. I've made my choice. We'll let fate decide. No! She jumped off the train. Even if she hit the water, considering the height... I doubt she survived. And with this tunnel, either way, she's gone, Poirot. I still can't believe what happened. Thirteen people took revenge on the same person. This investigation is so incredible. It almost looks like a detective story. It would surely be a bestseller. It is true that this case will remain as one of the most important investigations of my career. My only regret will be that I couldn't bring Ratchet to justice, but I can finally close this chapter of my life. Your determination paid off. You can be proud of yourself. I think we'll be arriving in Paris soon. If you will pardon me, Detective Locke, I have to settle a few details with Monsieur Book before we arrive. Please, go ahead. I still can't believe Freya was the killer. She never even cheated when we played poker. She used too much sugar. Nonsense! Her desserts were divine! Unfortunately, her actions were not so divine. There you are, my friend. Book, I have a favor to ask. Anything. When we arrive in Paris, will you speak to the police? I would rather keep a low profile. But why? Book... My first solution was incorrect. Nonsense. The naughtier the mystery became, the greater your brilliance. Please. Very well, if you insist. I want to thank you, gentlemen, for your service. The cuisine. Under difficult conditions, you surpass the reputation of the Orient Express. That is true. I look forward to seeing you again abroad, Monsieur Poirot. I promise... Not all of our trips are this eventful. Princess Dragomirov would like a word with you, Monsieur Poirot. It is important. She is waiting for you in her compartment. When a princess summons me, how can I refuse? 
Count Andreni, how is the Countess? Much better now that it's all over. I misjudged you, Poirot. And I you. There is something else about my wife you should know. Why I am so overprotective. She is pregnant. <sighs> you are quite the detective. <laughs> Actually, Dr. Constantine told me. She admitted as much when he was attending to her. If it's a girl, we are going to name her Daisy. If it's a boy... Hercule? He'll be stuck with Rudolf. It's a family tradition. I wish you and all of your family much happiness. Thank you. My daughter, my great friend, and I wanted to talk to you one last time. I speak on behalf of the entire Armstrong family, as well as those close to us. You have shown compassion. We know your reputation, and we understand that your choice was not easy for you. We are all the more grateful. Thank you. Congratulations, my dear. You managed to say the word thank you, although he did manage to put us through quite a lot. You have given us all closure and some peace of mind. You should know that I regret nothing. If this Freya Nielsen person had not been involved, I would have done it again. Someone told me the Stalinists were frightened of you. I believe them. The country of my birth breeds its share of brutes and bullies, but also some of the greatest intellectual and artistic minds the world has ever known. I pray that one day we will again be remembered for that. I share your hope, princess. And of course, with a real murderer of that man out there somewhere, we are no longer guilty of much. Correct? Princess, don't push your luck too far. If you'll excuse me, I have some packing to do. Ladies? At the end of this investigation, I still have my doubts. Did I make the right choice with the 12 self-proclaimed jurors? Yes, it was the right thing to do. As for Mademoiselle Nielsen, what would I have done if she had not escaped? A crime was committed. By letting all those responsible go free, I am no longer just a simple investigator, but a judge. This question will haunt me. Judges often take motive into consideration when deciding the sentence for a crime. You are not a judge. Your job is to establish the facts, which you have done. The case has been solved. Another already awaits you. It is the reason you were on this train. It is time. Time to move on.
I hope you will travel with us again, Monsieur Poirot. Very well. Monsieur, you can't pass. You can never have too many of them. Have you lost something? May I help you? Oh, Mr. Poirot, you have done so much already. What is it you have lost? My friends. We are traveling to Poland to help with children. We were to meet at an information booth. But where do I get information on how to find an information booth? There is, I believe, an information booth just inside the main terminal. Oh, thank you, sir. You are a great detective. And you, madame, are a good soul. I will miss this train. Mr. Poirot, Mr. McQueen here thinks he may know an attorney in the Berkshires who might need a gentleman's gentleman. He's old school English. I think the clock stopped for him in 1934. I hope it works out for you, Monsieur Masterman. What about you, Monsieur McQueen? Well, back to law school for me, following my father's footsteps. We can take the train to St. Pancreas, then the Piccadilly line to Heathrow and check out some flights. Might as well. We're already packed. I wish you both bonne chance. Poirot. Mission accomplished. I have reported to the police that Freya Nielsen killed Hatchet and that she escaped. They're issuing an international arrest warrant. There's a canal that runs alongside the tracks where she jumped from the train. But they say there's little chance she survived. The police have questioned all of the passengers and crew, so for now, they are free to leave. I gave them the results of my preliminary autopsy, and they have the report from the Venetian authorities. They were arguing about jurisdiction when I left. Thank you, Doctor. You have been of inestimable help. A fascinating case. I'm pleased I could assist you. Mr. Poirot, it seems our paths part here. It was an honor and a pleasure to work with you. And I am with you, Detective Locke. The case would have been impossible without your tenacity and dedication to finding the truth. You also proved to be an able con artist in Geneva. You too. <laughs> Thank you for everything. I'll never forget you. And I shall always treasure our collaboration. Well, that's that. I'm hungry. Let's go to the Wagon Rouge restaurant. They make an excellent leg of lamb. But it's only 5.34 p.m. Is food all you really think about, my friend? I'm the one inviting you. You've well deserved it. I'm warning you, I'm not going to obtain for you a secret recipe this time. Poirot, they make a chocolate mousse that is so creamy. It must have a secret ingredient in it. The last recipe came from a murderer. But it was sublime.
Poirot, I didn't really have time to say goodbye when we parted. I thought I had beaten the greatest detective in the world. But you unmasked me. I still had my revenge, though. I even managed to help myself to a small amount of cash from Wadi's bag before you interrupted me in Venice. It will be enough to settle somewhere in a quiet little town where I will create delicacies for appreciative clients. You won't hear from me again, nor will Book get any more of my recipes. Oh, and one last thing. You may not think so. But I truly believe Ratchet and Wadi got their just desserts. Regards, F. You, mademoiselle, are entirely too pleased with yourself. You give clues no one could follow. Unless they are Hercule Poirot.